So, I am a mammal, you are a mammal. Everybody here in this room is a mammal and possibly many people, if they are watching with you, are mammals. I'm very happy to be a mammal. Who wants to be a toad or a fish or a worm? We mammals are very successful animals. We mammals captured the whole globe. Wherever you go on this earth, you will see mammals. You will see them in the Arctic, you will see, in the, see them in the jungle, in the woods and in the water. And wherever we mammals are, we are very successful. Why are we so successful? The reason is possibly very simple. We mammals are very smart animals. And this, the intelligence of us mammals is a function of our brain. And the mammalian brain is a very different one from the brains of birds, from frogs, from reptiles and from fish. As you possibly know, only we mammals have a cortex. The cortex, and I would like to draw this to you, is a fantastic structure of our brain. You possibly know, I will show you this picture now, that if you look at a mammalian brain, this is, for example, the brain of a human person. And if you take a little bit, bit out of this part of the cortex, what you can see here is that this, part, that this cortex is divided in different layers, six layers altogether, and that there are different neurons specialized to different jobs in the cortex. And no other vertebrate has such a brain. The cortex is a fantastic machine because of one architectural feature. Look, I need now another color. I take red. All information comes in vertically. And every red line is one specific information that comes into the cortex. Vertically arranged so that each ner nerve cell along that red line receives the same kind of information. But each cell processes this information in a different way. So that when you see a specific color, a specific sound, a specific touch on your skin, it is analyzed in all details along the vertical dimension. And now comes the following point. All of this information is then exchanged horizontally with all of the other areas of the brain. This part of the brain talks to that part of the brain, to that part, to that part, to that part, and so on. You have a vertical arrangement with detailed analysis and a horizontal exchange of information. This is the machine of thinking. I have it, you have it. And this is the reason why we mammals are so smart. This is a theory that emerged about 100 years ago. And since 100 years, we believe that this is true. And I will tell you now that this is wrong. Why is this wrong? Because this theory has a certain implication. The implication is an animal without such a cortex should not be able to be smart because this is the only arrangement that makes animals smart. This is position one of this old theory. But there is a second position. Brains have to have a cortex and they have to be large. Our brain is about 1.3 kilogram. It's a big brain. Most other animals, 
For example, birds have very small brains of 5 gram, 2 gram, 10 gram, and they have no cortex. So birds, for example, should not be able to be so intelligent. And now comes a new chapter. We have a problem. Birds are so smart as we mammals. Take, for example, crows and ravens. For example, ravens can plan into the future as good as chimpanzees do. They can combine information logically as good as chimpanzees do. Let's take another task. Are you able to inhibit your motives immediately? What do I mean with that? For example, let's take two different kinds of foods. This is one that I like, and this is one for which I'm crazy. I would like to eat that. I like that, but not as much as this one. Now I give the animal, a raven for example, this. And the animal has learned that it has to look at that without eating it. And then it looks and looks and looks and it is not allowed to eat it. How long will the animal be able to just stop its eating? Ravens can do that for about 10 minutes. When they wait 10 minutes, they get the good food and they eat the good food. Chimpanzees can do that for four minutes only. Gray parrots can do that for 15 minutes. Our children cannot do that for 15 minutes. So all aspects that we call cognition are equal between birds and mammals. And if you take the top birds, parrots and corvids, you can see that they are as intelligent as primates. And now we are back to the brain problem. A raven has 15 gram of brain. 15 gram of brain usually even less, about 12. A, chimpanzee's, a chimpanzee has 400 gram of brain. So 12 gram versus 400 gram. In these 12 gram, the raven is doing the same as the chimpanzee with 400 gram. The chimpanzee has this kind of cortex. So what is the brain of the raven? I'll tell you. I draw you now a raven brain. It looks a bit like that. If we take out a little part of it, this is the raven brain, I will take out a part of it. I will magnify it here. What do we see here? No lamination. Disorganized cells. So here we have a small brain that is not organized. Here we have a large brain that is beautifully organized. How is this possible that this is the better design than our brain. You possibly want to have an answer to this. I have to tell you that I'm only giving you half an answer because I don't know the second half of it. But at least we learned a little bit of this mystery in the last years. I'll tell you. First, it seems that in the evolution of vertebrate brains, of bird brains and mammalian brains, 
both groups, mammals and birds, started, I will show you here, with a primitive cortex with just three layers. We mammals doubled the numbers of layers What birds did, they gave up the layers. So we doubled the numbers of layers, they gave it up. Why did they give it up? Now comes the second point. Their brain is much denser packed with neurons than our brain. They have about four times more neurons per volume space. That means if you take, now I do this in red to be pedagogically able. If you take a certain part of the brain out and you take the same part of the brain here, the same volume you have, excuse me for this, This is the picture. You have more neurons here than there. Depending on where you look, the difference can be large, four times. Sometimes it can be very small, like double. But in any way, it's more densely packed here than there. So birds have small brains, but they have brains with much more neurons than we expect it to be. Second implication of this, these neurons are very close to each other. These neurons are far away from each other. So these neurons can communicate faster with each other because they are very close by. These are possibly some of the reasons why birds have such superior abilities abilities that we did not expect from these birds. But the bottom line is the following. There must be more what makes them so smart. And the majority of this answer I cannot give you yet. The only thing is that we have two implications. First, the next time that you look out of your window and you see a crow, say, hello, Feathered, feathered chimpanzee. It's a chimpanzee with feathers. Isn't that beautiful? And it visits you. It's out in, in the trees of, of Russia. It's beautiful. Second, per neuron, birds are able to come up with more intelligence than we are able to do. So they have the better design. We don't. But then you can ask the critical question, why are we humans ruling the world? Why do we shoot crows and they don't shoot us? The reason is possibly the following. We have really huge brains. So we might have not the best design, but we compensate the lack of the best design by sheer size, just by number crunching power of a huge brain. This is how we got so smart to capture the world. And now imagine another evolution where birds would have developed large brains. And now think back that birds are the surviving dinosaurs. The dinosaur with the largest brain was T-Rex. It had 110 gram of brain. Maybe T-Rex was not so dumb as we usually think. 